Hi everyone, welcome to my review of Yasujiro Ozu's Good Morning um, in 1959. And um, this came out the same year as Floating Weeds, um, you know, which is quite stunning to say. To say the least, they brought out these two films in the same year, um, which is here, Masters of Cinema. I'll be watching this on Sunday and uh, reviewing it next week, hopefully. Um, but yeah, it was the same year as Floating Weeds, and um, I hear, you know, that's completely set, uh, different to this film. Um, and, you know, Ozu. Um, this was in the late stages of his filmography, um, you know, he, he did die in 63, and uh, his last film, of course, was An Autumn Afternoon, but, um, yeah, Good Morning was a, a one that I was really looking forward to um, seeing for the first time. Um, I saw I Was Born But um, in January, <clears throat> and I saw this in April, and then I rewatched it yesterday, um, so it's a pretty quick rewatch. Um, you know, not even two months ago, and... Um, because I watched it in late April, and um, this, yeah, this is um, a reworking of I Was Born But, uh, which is on the same, um, you know, Blu-ray, it comes in the same one, um, which is fitting, because it is a reworking of this film, although, of course, a lot of things are different, um, you know, of course, the things with the TV, uh, famously, and that's, you know, that's one of the, it's quite famous, uh, this is one of the most, um, you know, well-known Ozu's, you know, commercial, although, Let's just face it, you know, even now, Ozu films aren't really too well known uh, by the general, you know, public. Um, Tokyo Story, you know, I heard that, I heard of that film, you know, when I was a kid. But So I suppose, and yeah, that's the only one really that's worldwide in terms of, you know, taking everything into account. You know, a lot of his other ones are, you know, seen, but, you know, late spring and stuff, um, and floating weeds, and this, but... Really, let's face it. Not still, not they're still underseen, um, you know, by most people, um, <coughs> and it's a shame, you know, as, as well. Most people don't really watch um, late spring and early summer before Tokyo Story. Um, I think that's the only one really that's just seen, you know, enough by you know and, and respected and and but yeah, by most people. Um, but Good Morning is one of his most well um, well seen. Um, you know, most seen, but it's not too acclaimed by the critics. Um, and you know, before going in, I was a bit, um, yeah, I thought I didn't have my, you know, massive expectations really. Um, but I loved I Was Born But, so I was really, you know, <clears throat> as well looking forward to this film, uh, seeing what he would do, reworking it. And you know, I was really surprised. Um, I think this was a better film than I Was Born But, and um, I absolutely loved that film, uh, that was stunning. Um, I prefer this, um, and I think it's, yeah, it's this better film. Um, and uh, you, you could say this is his purest comedy, Ozu's, um, and, you know, the most Ozu films would be uh, dramas with um, some comedy elements in there, you know, especially ones like Early Summer. There was a lot of comedy in them films, um, but he'd mainly do dramas, and this and I Was Born But and maybe a couple of others are the ones where he would actually do, you know, full-on comedies. Um, <coughs> And, you know, as well, you know, I was really looking forward to this because um, a lot of the highlights, actually, of, of Ozu films, especially early summer, uh, was the stuff with the, the grandchildren, you know, the, the kids uh, mucking about um, and seeing, you know, the conflict uh, in a humorous way uh, between, you know, the, the adults. Um, yeah, especially in early summer. So I was really, you know, looking forward to seeing a film where he would mainly focus on childhood. Um, and, yeah, this is what this film does, although it does... Um, have a lot of you know the adult stuff and their subplots as well, but the main focus is these children, um, these two brothers, um, and this was uh, Ozu's second color film I believe um, after Equinox Flower, <coughs> and of course Floating Weeds as well in the same year, um, but yeah this is Ozu's purest comedy I believe, and um, it's basically uh, these two two brothers, um, you know they, you start off uh, by seeing them sort of. Uh, messing about and doing these things uh, and there's a lot of fart jokes in this film as well um, which I'll get to um, but yeah the main the main plot is these two two brothers um, they eventually uh, you know want a TV and uh, they ask their mum and dad because um, they go to their you know their friend's house and, and watch um, sumo wrestling stuff uh, which is a really great scene um, and uh, yeah really warm scene but yeah they, they go to their friend's house often and uh, yeah, they desperately want a TV. Uh, you know, at the time, uh, not a lot of people in Japan at that time, you know, had TVs. Um, but it was coming about, you know, more more so um, then. And, um, you know, it was mainly, you know, a luxury then. But, 
uh, you know, not everyone did have TVs, of course. And um, yeah, I think um, that um, Ozu just perfected um, everything in this film, really. Um, but it's mainly, yeah, it's about these two children. They eventually, they ask for TV and they, um, their mum and dad refuse, of course. Um, and uh, about halfway through the film, you could say, um, they go on this, this strike and they, they're silent, you know, for the rest of the film. Uh, you know, to the adults and everyone else, um, they do talk, but they have to, you know have to do this this sign, um, and that means you know the other one can talk, um, like a permission, um, and that's the main, mainly the second half of the film is them you know rebelling, you could say, um, and I thought that was done absolutely perfectly, um, and it was just so funny. Uh, this film is definitely Oz's uh, funniest film, and of course it is you know is is full on attempts at comedy, but um, you know. There's not a single uh, minute where there isn't something funny, and you know, everything from the script to the to performances and the timing of the comedy <coughs> is really absolutely flawless. Um, but yeah, as well, of course, he, he, there's loads of messages in this film and, and themes that he's trying to explore. Of course, childhood, and uh, but the westernization of Japan as well, and industrialization. Um, loads of different things throughout the film that hints at that, and of course, you know, the main. Uh, drive of the film, you could say, is involved in that too. Um, but yeah, this is Ozu. Uh, there's a lot of messages here. Uh, there's, there's a lot of things fought out. It's just handled more in a light way. Um, this is Ozu's lightest film, you could say. Uh, yeah, I would say so. Um, maybe that's why it's not, <coughs> again, taken to, as too seriously as the rest of them, um, or the rest of his post-war films, because um, generally they are, they are the most uh, acclaimed um, and. This is one of the, the least acclaimed of his post-war films, you could say, uh, certainly by the critics. Uh, and maybe that's just because it's a lighter film and, uh, you know, comedies people don't always take as seriously. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, yeah, and a lot of modern comedies especially are crap. Um, but this is a comedy that is really well, it's so well thought out. Um, but of, of course it's also dramatic and it's got great characters. Um, you know, the two kids, um, Minoru and... Um, is Samu, they're played by Koji Shitaro, um, Shitara and um, Misaki, M Misahiko um, Shimazu, I think it was. Um, he played the little one, as Samu. And um, then you've also got um, Chishu Ryo, who plays the father. Um, of course, an Ozu regular. He's in pretty much all the, the Ozu films. And then you've got Kaniko um, Miyaki, who's also an Ozu regular. Um, she plays the mother. And uh, you've got loads of other side characters as well. You know, you've got this like this neighbourhood, uh, this community. <clears throat> That's another thing. Um, you know, in this film that he portrays so well. You know, that all, all of the side characters in this film are memorable and um, really well written. Uh, but you know, the, the the dialogue they have between them is so natural. Um, and even though this film is mainly about the children, um, all the subplots and all the you know the adult stuff. Um, it's just, you know, it's so well wrapped up at the end that, that, that you know, it's just, this film is flawless. Um, I really think it is. And, uh, you know, yeah, it really took me by surprise, actually, <clears throat> because it made it into, you know, my top 150 films, actually. Um, and one of my absolute favourite Ozes. Yeah, I don't think it's as good as the Rico trilogy. Um, but apart from that and, you know, Late Autumn, um, which is a reworking of Late Spring, I think this is, yeah, it's, it's yeah, at the moment it's my fifth favourite Ozu, and I've seen ten, um, and, you know, I've seen The Only Son as well, and, and I Was Born But, but this, you know, is so enjoyable, so relatable, uh, so once again, you know, Ozu, it's like most Ozu films in, in you know, the camera, <coughs> you know, techniques and everything, and the way he directs the film, um, you could say it's a bit more, um, bit more yeah laid back maybe you could say um, but you know it's still so much goes into the, the actual framing you know um, the compositions um, of every shot really um, and again very little camera camera movements um, I don't know I couldn't really see any uh, maybe one but um, you know he places it low down um, and you know static shots and uh, once again this gets you know it gets you it eases you into the films um, <coughs> In a natural way, um, and um, you know that as well. He breaks the the eye line, you know, kind of uh, rule. Um, but really, this is as I've said before. This just all adds up to just uh, films you can just be so immersed in without you know 
any without really realizing it because you just kind of observe what's going on without you know as I say any camera movements um, really and uh, but everything is so what perfectly thought out the combination of that is is, is just so genius that um, there is so much going on within the frames um, and because it doesn't move you're not aware of a lot of the stuff but really um, if, you, if you look closely there's so much put into the, to the actual framing um, it's just as effective really as loads of camera movements and stuff in, in films um, but there's something really unique about Ozu films and the way he draws you in and the way it's so natural um, and this is one of his most natural um, you know I've, ne I've never really seen a, <coughs> a film that completely focuses on childhood um, that's as you know as, as good as this um, really like in terms of how it captures childhood um, Maybe you could say things like "Stand by Me" and stuff, but um, this is this is up there, you know, with one of the best sort of child films. Um, it's just so true to childhood um, and uh, so natural um, and relatable, um, and as well, just joyous. You know, it's so so um, enjoyable to watch all this happening, um, and you know, all the comedy, the light-hearted things uh, that you do as a childhood, uh, you know, as a child. Um, Ozu manages to. You know, perfect that. Um, he knows exactly what he was doing with this film, and um, absolutely flawless. Uh, you know, in capturing that um, and portraying, uh, you know, these brothers and, and and friends as well. You've got um, some some um, some of the friends in the films of the kids, um, and some really good uh, some really good uh, comedy stuff there as well. Um, and yeah, um, there's a lot of fart jokes in this film. Uh, maybe that's another thing we'll talk about um, because maybe that's why. <clears throat> this isn't quite as acclaimed um, and it could depend on how people take them fart jokes um, maybe and just kind of dismiss this film you know at the end and think oh yeah it was it, it was yeah it's a basic film or whatever it was nothing to take seriously um, because there was fart jokes in it um, and yes I don't really think I've seen films too much where I like fart jokes um, but in this film he manages to even elevate that um, and, and make that you know part of the part of the humor and stuff and it's because you know as well it's done in a way where it's uh, it's kind of the, the banter and, and the the, uh, the games that the children play um, and it's done in such an organic way that it's not really um, it's not poor taste and in most films it is you know a lot of like you know Adam Sandler films and stuff <coughs> you know now they um, they have all these things in it and it's done in you know such a sh crap way um, so childish and stuff, but when it's adults doing it, you know, like that in that manner, like Adam Sandler films and stuff, um, and you know, clearly just done in such a manner that's uh, you know just really just yeah poor taste, you know. But then you compare it, you compare that with this. It's done so well, and it's just part of the um, the natural childhood, um, and it, you know, Ozu again, you know, um, very. Um, yeah, it does it in such a uh, sincere way that it doesn't come across in, as uh, you know as, as poor taste at all. It just works perfectly, uh, and he elevates these. You know, all the fart jokes in this film are funny, and I've never really laughed at uh, you know fart jokes in a film. Um, I suppose that you know that's one of the things maybe that uh, depends on what you know how you think of this film. Um, you know, some of the humour in that. Um, I think it was perfect. Um, these things. Um, but yeah, the, the comedy throughout, as I say, the timing is absolutely perfect. Um, and of course the performances, um, you know, by Minoru and um, Isamu, is, uh, you know, the two actors uh, that played then. Um, they're so natural in this film and, you know, you actually think you're watching them, you know, as, as they go about their lives. Um, you know, great performances. And, you know, Isamu, you know, the actor was only, I believe, six at the time. Um, and you know he does such a good job. You know it's, it's so natural, and uh, he may be you know <laughs> the cutest kid in cinema um, because yeah, and it's just so so funny um, to watch them kind of um, you know banter and, and, and go about their lives. Um, but yeah, the first half is just so so joyous, and uh, you know um, once it gets to the point where they they, they go on their silent strike, um, you know I think the film gets even better. Um, you know, there's so much uh, genius things that Ozu, you know, plays off um, situations that arise when when they can't talk, um, and it just adds to such an engaging experience, and you know, adds so much to the comedy, um, and really just Ozu as well, showing the genius of his writing, 
um, because this film, of course, um, you know, co-written by Ozu, um, the script is so sharp, so so genius, um, but as well really natural. Um, you know, things that kids would say, um, and you, you just captured childhood so well. Um, and you know, everything in this film, from you know the script to the acting, um, you know, just even the, you know the colours in this film. Once again, there's there's something about as I've said, you know the the colour Ozu's and in general the the, the late fifties, early sixties. Um, <clears throat> to do with film stock and of course and stuff but um, it's very nostalgic that's what it is and um, you know you could say it's more simplistic colours but they actually they're, they're more nostalgic I think um, you know an example of course I've said before would be some of the Hitchcocks uh, like Vertigo uh, North by Northwest and stuff uh, and actually some of the Bond films you know the early 60s um, but yeah it's just such a nostalgic uh, look of the film and that only adds to the to the fun, you know, to the, you know, the charm of this film. Um, and that's yeah, this is one of the most charming films I've ever seen. Um, you know, in everything, all the gestures, um, and you know, just the whole way that the, the as well the, the neighbors, uh, you know, bicker and stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, that's another thing, of course. Um, he he doesn't just focus, obviously, of course, on the the children. Um, there's loads of different subplots and stuff. Um, one about this, uh, where there's money gone missing, and um, you know, Kaneko uh, Miyaki, she's um, she's kind of um, involved in a lot of the different side characters there in terms of that, and you know, this money went missing. Um, that's wrapped up by the end of the film perfectly as well. Um, and you've also got um, Kiji Sada, who's in this film, and he plays um, he he Chiro or something like that. Uh, I think it was. Um, He's one of the uh, side characters in the film, and he's their teacher, um, the, the children's teacher. Um, he was one of my favourite characters, um, and he has this kind of romance going on, uh, you could say, in the film as well. Which by the end of the film, oh, it was really satisfying. Um, and uh, it's, you know, all these subplots—they never just take, they never really um, feel like subplots. Um, it's all just part of the narrative. Um, this this kind of this whole community, and uh, like early summer, but kind of flipped you know you've got it mainly focused on the children um, whereas early summer mainly focused on the adults but the children's you know arcs wrapped up perfectly um, towards the end but it felt like it was just all part of this you know this community that, and you know fed into the narrative uh, and this flips it you know mainly focused on the children but um, <clears throat> everything you know in, in the rest of the, you know the adults uh, storylines is all wrapped up perfectly and just feels you know organically um, part of the narrative um, and it adds you know so much it plays off of the, the children's arc as well um, but just all the scenes it's just so natural and so enjoyable and charming to, to see you know all the bickering and stuff um, going on um, within the neighborhood and stuff um, and it's just so sincere uh, so wonderful such a wonderful film this um, and as I say everything just wraps up perfectly towards the end um, but yeah, Kiji Sada, he's one of my favourite characters in the film. Um, his character, and you know, he's in a lot of Ozu films actually. He was in Late Autumn as well, I believe. Um, and yeah, it's just everything that, that he's, you know, and the way the scenes where he's teaching them and stuff. Um, they get taught English in this film, um, which is another, uh, you know, message, um, a theme that Ozu is exploring, you know, westernisation of Japan. Um, and that was all really. Um, you know, so well portrayed, but also, you know, used as a comedy as well. Um, and yeah, this, this film has got so many layers, but people don't really, a lot of people obviously don't quite um, catch on at first. They just think it's a comedy. They write it off maybe compared to, <coughs> you know, the other Ozu's, but um, it manages to explore all these themes, Ozu, um, in such a, you know, a, a way that it's still a light film, um, but, you know, there's a lot of serious, quite deep issues going on. And the relationship, you know, that these two characters have, the brothers in particular, um, so heartfelt and so moving, actually, in its own way. And, you know, by the end of it, yeah, it's just such a, you know, experience. Um, it's like you've experienced part of your childhood again. Um, and, you know, the acting of these two kids as well is so good, so natural. Um, this is what kids would actually act like, of, of course. There's been many films where um, they, they can't pull this off. Um, you know, it's like actually kids would act you know and, and, and it seems scripted um actually a perfect example of that it's not really a film what the tv one um was it 
um, the original, uh, not the new one, of course, that was stunning. Um, where kids, they're not, they weren't acting like actual kids, really. They were, and you can tell they were reading the script and stuff. Um, and, you know, acting like adults, you know, but in a forced way. Um, and this is, you know, this is what kids act like in this film. It's portrayed so, so wonderfully. Um, and the dynamics between the two characters, uh, two brothers, is perfect and so warm and tender throughout. Um, and you know, one of my favourite scenes with the, um, <coughs> is the police scene. You know, near the end of the film. <coughs> And um, yeah, it's it's just so it's just so moving and charming. Uh, yeah, overall, I think this film is an absolute masterpiece, uh, uh, and you know, definitely one of the best Ozu films. Um, as I say, not quite, don't quite quite think it's on the level of um, you know, his Noriko trilogy and you know, Late Autumn. Um, and you know, it's close. It's really close to a tier two, I think, and maybe it will. Uh, become one eventually, uh, you know, I might change it, you know, um, and, you know, on the Ozu ranking, I'll say if I've changed it or not, um, moved it up, <coughs> you know, it's, it's been hard to decide, because um, I've only really had, well, I mean, I saw it first in April, but, you know, this rewatch, um, it's just obviously even better than I remembered, and I've only had a night to kind of think on it, um, but yeah, I think for now, I'll stick with 100% uh, plus tier 3. Um, which is, you know, of course, absolutely a, a massively high score for me. Um, and it's in my top 150 films at the moment. Um, yeah, I just don't... F it's very close, it, you know, it, if not on a tier 2 level, um, which is, you know, my mid-tier, really. And then I've got, of course, my my bonus tier, which is tier S. But, um, you know, tier 2 is, is, is the late spring, early summer kind of thing. Um, I think at the moment I'll stick with a tier three for this one, um, and uh, that's already massively high. This is a this is a masterpiece of cinema, I think, and um, yeah, I just fell in love with this film the first time I saw it, and um, you know it's it's only better the second time round. Um, you know who knows? As I say, it may grow uh, to a tier two, but you know at the moment I think I have to be strict and draw a line. Um, there's, there's a mark on my list where. There's a line where if if a film doesn't quite get to that, you know my preference and, and quality, <coughs> it's not a tier two, and um, you know that line sl may may extend a little bit, um, but that's a sort of a film like a Kiru. Um, there's a spoiler. That's the film really I measure uh, a tier two by. Um, if it gets a film gets past that, um, roughly you know on my list, it, it's a tier two. But um, this isn't quite I don't think there. Um, but I absolutely love this film, and um, I really recommend this. It's probably the um, the easiest, the most accessible Ozu film. Although for me, you know, all Ozus are accessible um, because of his style. Um, <coughs> you know, and they're all relatable and stuff. Um, but maybe, uh, you know, yes, Good Morning would be a great place to start with Ozu, basically. Um, you know, Late Spring and Good Morning would be the perfect two films, I would say, to start with Ozu. Especially if you want to, you know, focus more on his post-war films, uh, which are definitely better overall, I'd say. Um, but you know, he's he's he, he done some great films. You know, I was born but as well, um, which is this is really working off. Um, and I always kind of want want to watch the um, if I can seek it out the original of a, you know um, before watching you know a reworking or a remake. Um, but yeah, no, this would be a, a great place to start because it has all the things that Oz is you know great at, um, and it's got you know the the relatable, um, the characters and everything. It's a light film, and um, yeah, it's not as sad um, as and, and that as, and shattering or anything like that as uh, a lot of his post-war films. But um, yeah, it's for what it is, a, a, you know, a comedy film. Um, it's perfect and uh, one of my favourite films of all time. Uh, so thanks for watching. Uh, Good morning, and um, yes, that is reviewed. And next up from Ozu, uh, you know, next week I'll be reviewing. Floating Weeds. Um, be watching that on Sunday, and maybe we'll get another Ozu in there uh, next week. Um, the only son, I was born but maybe. Um, but yes, um, could not uh, say anything better about this film. You know, highest praise from me um, for a comedy. And uh, yeah, um, thanks for watching. <laughs>